Hi, I'm Susie again, the Utah Ambassador for the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. Just adjusting my camera here. <sighs> Today um, is the second in my sarcoidosis series that I'm making. And today we're gonna to talk about diagnosis. How do you get diagnosed with sarcoidosis? Um, but first I feel like I need to tell you how I'm feeling today. Um, Cause with sarcoidosis, every day is different. I feel tired, short of breath, I have a fever. Um, probably not gonna be very productive today, but I did put on my makeup and I'm making this video, yay! I am using stopsarcoidosis.org as my reference. Um, so for me, so far, I feel like they're the authority on sarcoidosis. Um, they know more than most doctors that I've talked to. So sarcoidosis is a diagnosis of exclusion. What that means is a lot like fibromyalgia in the sense that um, they're mostly making sure you don't have anything else and then they're like, okay, maybe it's sarcoidosis. Um, and something to keep in mind with that is that if the doctor doesn't think of sarcoidosis, then there's no way they can diagnose that, right? Um, you can also run into racial bias. There is a lot of belief that only African Americans can get sarcoidosis. And clearly you can see that's not true. I do not have any Sub-Saharan African in my um, DNA. I've done my DNA test. and um, But the truth is anybody can get it. There is a high prevalence in Scandinavian people and in um, African American people, but anybody can get it. So even if you don't have any Scandinavian or African ancestry, you can still get sarcoidosis. Okay? Um, not to bring you down. Hopefully you don't have it. <laughs> But if you're watching this, you probably got diagnosed and are wanting more information. Um, so on the website it says, diagnosis of exclusion means that doctors will oftentimes have to rule out other possible diseases before confirming that your symptoms are caused by sarcoidosis. There is no test, no objective test that can easily diagnose sarcoidosis. Um, numerous exams and tests are required to confirm your diagnosis and to help your doctor to decide on the best tre treatment options. So your doctor is gonna take your medical history, they're gonna perform an exam, they're gonna do a bunch of tests, and um, because of a lot of the um, symptoms of sarcoidosis also occur in other diseases, it might take them a while to get around to finding sarcoidosis. Um, your health care provider may work to rule out other possible explanations. I think we'll do the tests and then I'll tell you what happened to me, okay? So the first one is chest x-ray. So if your sarcoidosis is bad enough, um, the granulomas can show up on a chest x-ray. That is not enough to diagnose it on its own, but it, um, could lead them to doing more testing. Um, me, myself, I've gotten, I get pneumonia a lot, um, which I believe is because of my sarcoidosis, uh, but they were never able to diagnose sarcoidosis on my chest x-rays. In fact, when I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis, my chest x-ray was clear, and most of the time if I don't have pneumonia, my chest x-ray is clear. The next thing is a CT scan. So. Um, a CT scan is also known as a CAT scan, and they use a different machine um, than an x-ray machine. It looks like a big donut, uh, and you lay on a bed and go kind of inside the donut. It's smaller than an MRI machine, but the donut's bigger, so it's not as claustrophobic. <sighs> to see sarcoidosis with a CT scan, they also need to use IV contrast. And um, so they do two scans. They do one with contrast and one without contrast, and then they compare. And um, I had a doctor tell me just doing it without contrast is like looking for something in the dark. So that's why they need the contrast. So the complication with contrast is that 
you can have contrast several times and not have any problems and then one day you have an allergic reaction and those allergic reactions will get worse every time you get contrast and I actually have an uncle that died from an allergic reaction to CT contrast the last time I had CT contrast I had an allergic reaction so I now refuse the IV contrast with my CT scans which makes it hard because they want to do the IV contrast CT scan on me at least once a year so that they can see the progress of my disease but I feel that the contrast will kill me faster than sarcoidosis so um, they have a hard time watching the progression of my disease just because I refuse that treatment that's enough about that there's more information on the website if you want to know how a CT scan works the other one is a lung function test. I have to do that once a year. Um, so far, my lung function tests always come back normal. Isn't that funny? Because I'm usually short of breath and I'm a really heavy breather. But my lung test still, my, they call it a PFT, pulmonary function test. Um, so what they're looking for on that is to see how difficult it is for you to breathe. Another test they can do is a lung biopsy. So if um, your CT scan shows that there's something to biopsy, then sometimes they will do the lung biopsy to see if there are any granulomas. Um, because of the CT scan, they can see where the granulomas are and then pull them out and look at them under a microscope and say, yep, that looks like sarcoidosis. Other biopsies, which is what I had, um, so if they find the sarcoidosis in a different area of your body, they can biopsy anything. Biopsy just means they punch a hole in it, take a piece out, and look at it under a microscope. And for me, they did that of several of my lymph nodes. Um, blood tests. So many people with sarcoidosis may make excess amounts of vitamin D or a chemical called angi angio... Hmm, can't say this angiotensin converting enzyme. Um, the blood test can be used to detect high levels of these substances. However, other conditions also cause elevated levels of those things. And so those tests can not be used to diagnose sarcoidosis. For me, all of those tests came back negative. However, on my most recent visit with my endocrinologist, my vitamin D was so low that I am now taking 50,000 units once a week. It's a prescription vitamin D because it's such a high dose. So the blood tests, in my opinion, for me, they're not a good idea because they didn't really tell the doctors anything. Here we go. MRIs are better for the neurosarcoidosis. Um, they can use to be, be used to look at um, for signs of sarcoidosis in the brain, spinal cord, heart, bones, and other organs. So that is true. I have had my brain MRI a couple times, and I had a cardiac MRI. And, um, sorry, I'm really having a hard time with the breathing today. Okay, so the nuclear imaging. Fortunately, I haven't done this one. <laughs> uh, these tests use radioactive dye. I don't know, what's the difference between this and a PET scan? I'll get to PET scan in a minute, but I know they used a radioactive something with the PET scan. These tests use radioactive dye to help clinicians see blood flow through various organs. The dye is injected to your veins before the scan. After a period of time, your body is scanned with a special camera that can detect the radiation from the dye. Um, and they can sometimes be used to help diagnose sarcoidosis of the heart. So I honestly don't understand how that's different than the PET scan. Because I know with the PET scan, they in injected me with something radioactive. It was interesting because I came in this big protective case and with metal around it. And the, um, the nurse had to wear all this protective gear before she put it in my bloodstream. So the PET scan um, says it also uses a radioactive substance. Um, and they also had me drink something. And um, the PET scan was really good because it goes from about your jaw down to the middle of your upper thigh. And um, it's good for looking for cancer 
and um, sarcoidosis shows up in the PET scan the same as cancer. So after reading the PET scan, they could say that I had sarcoidosis in my lymph nodes all the way from my neck all the way down to my groin and by my liver and in my lungs. And um, that's all I remember for sure. I don't have the report in front of me. Um, but it couldn't tell you exactly what it was. It could just tell you where the problem was. So after the PET scan, they said, well, you either have lymphoma, Castleman's disease, or sarcoidosis. And so um, after my PET scan, I had a mediastinoscopy where I have a scar. See the scar right here? They cut me right here and put a scope down between my skin and my sternum. And they were able to get all my lymph nodes that way. They biopsied all the ones up here and all the ones down here through my chest. And as I was waking up from surgery, my doctor was like, good news, you have sarcoidosis. So I don't know what world that's good news in. Um, Cause a lot of the lymphomas actually have a really high cure rate. So I'm not 100% convinced that sarcoidosis is better because they don't know how to fix me. <laughs> so I don't wish lymphoma on anybody. I just, I just don't like being sick. Um, and Castleman's disease, I looked it up and I don't remember what it was. It's something really rare that didn't apply to me. So that's why I don't remember it. Um, they also do heart rhythm monitoring. So that's an ECG or an EKG. Oh my gosh, I get EKGs all the time. Because my resting heart rate, let's see what my resting heart rate is right now. Well, I don't know if this really qualifies as resting because I'm talking. But look, right now it's 128. Can you see that? 129. It's probably because I'm twisting my arm, made my heart beat harder. <laughs> so that's worrisome for a lot of doctors and nurses. But, you know, I've got to. So I don't stress about it anymore. Um, but because that, I did have an echocardiogram way back before I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. <sighs> That's how I was diagnosed with dysautonomia, which required its own video. Um, but an echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart. And um, they did a stress test at the same time. Let me tell you, that was hard. Although I'm glad I could do, I don't have to do the chemically induced. If you're not able to get on the treadmill, they'll inject you with chemicals to artificially make your heart race. Um, and that sounds horrible because I've had so many drug reactions in the past year. So, okay, I just want to tell you my journey to diagnosis. You got a big chunk of it through telling you about all those tests. Those are all the tests. Um, so I'm going to tell you all the significant things to me. I don't know if they're all related to sarcoidosis, but these are significant health events in my lifetime. When I was six, I had rheumatic fever. When I was 10, I had mono. When I was 19, I had Epstein-Barr and chronic fatigue syndrome. When I was 25, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, and then, uh, that's all I can think of. <laughs> I have been on and off disability my whole life. I got held up back in the fifth grade because they said I was still one of the smartest kids in the class, but the district had a requirement. You had to attend a certain amount of days to pass. So I got held back in fifth grade. And then my second year of fifth grade, they said, you're too smart for the sixth grade, so we're gonna bump you to seventh. So I got to go to fifth grade twice and sixth grade not at all. Crazy system there. Um, but that, yeah, so my whole life, it um, people have had an impression of me that I start things but don't finish. Um, it's more like I start things and then I get sick before I finish. So I need to take time off and resume when I'm better. Um, so yeah, this year, let's see, I was off work on disability for um, about six years in the 2000s. I went back to work in 2010 
and successfully worked until 2017. And um, my symptom that started this whole mess was my racing heart and my fatigue. Uh, it was making it hard to work. I just started going to the emergency room and they're like, we don't know what's wrong with you. And then I ended up going to the hospital, um, found out I had lactic acidosis and was hospitalized and then found out I had neurological problems and I just kept pushing, pushing, pushing for diagnoses and I finally got diagnosed with sarcoidosis last July and there are, there's an ER doctor here at American Fork, absolutely love him. One of the best doctors, his name is Dr. Aldroyd. He is a really, really good doctor and that emergency room is fortunate to have him. He told me that I probably have other things that haven't been diagnosed, but you know what? I'm tired. I'm not gonna push anymore. I'm tired of looking for doctors. <laughs> I'm tired of looking for diagnoses. I'm just gonna go on and do the best I can. So my next video, I am going to talk about treatment options. Um, I'm not, I haven't given up. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> so um, I'll talk to you about the different treatment options and how I'm handling it. So have a great week.